Hey. Oh, hi. What a surprise to see you here. Is your son David all right? Oh, he's fine. Active as always. Oh, good. He's such a sweet boy. How old is he now? He'll be eight soon. Eight? Wow, and already up to here. Yeah. Now, what's up? Uh, why are you visiting me? Oh, hold on. This. I got your letter about the flu. Hmm. Right. I sent that letter to all the parents to explain what the school is doing to prevent the flu. And, if parents have kids who get the flu, what they should do to take care of them. Right. I understand how important that is. Mm. But after reading the letter, I had a few questions. Do you mind if we talk a while? Sure. Let's sit down over here. If children get the flu, how dangerous is that? Most children who get the flu are sick for a few days, and then they recover just fine. But certain kids are more likely to get very ill and even need to go to the hospital. Those high-risk kids are children five or younger, and especially children younger than age two, and kids who have medical problems like asthma or diabetes. At age eight, your David is old enough that he'd be fine. If he got the flu, he'd probably recover quickly. That's a relief. David doesn't have any health problems like that, but a friend of mine, her daughter has asthma. Ooh, well, she should be especially careful about preventing her daughter from getting the flu. And taking good care of her if she does get sick. Oh, yeah. She's a real good mom. Good. Really, all adults and all children should do the proper things to prevent the spread of the flu. Getting the flu is no fun, even for healthy people. And we sure don't want to spread the flu to people who are at risk for more serious health problems if they get the flu. Sure, I understand that. My whole family gets the flu vaccination every year. Wonderful. That's really important. Compared to getting a cold, getting the flu is more dangerous for children. Every year, the flu makes many children very sick. I saw in your letter that you should help children learn to cover their mouth and nose with a tissue when they cough or sneeze and then throw the tissue away and wash their hands. I do that with David. I remind him to wash his hands often. <laughs> yeah, kids and adults both need that reminder. That helps prevent all kinds of germs from spreading. Hey, if uh, there isn't a tissue around, when you need to cough or sneeze, what do you do? Don't sneeze into your hands, but instead do this. Sneeze or cough in your elbow. Perfect. And you should try not to touch your mouth, nose, or eyes. And wash your hands often. Oh, I'm real careful to wash my hands often and use a tissue when I cough or sneeze. Thanks for the reminder. I'll be sure to keep reminding David. I want to be sure my whole family does everything we can to avoid our exposure to germs and prevent spreading them to others. Good. Did you get your flu vaccination for this year yet? Yes, I got one last week from my doctor. Great. And I got your permission form allowing me to give David his flu vaccination. So he's had it too. Great, thanks. The CDC, you know, the government agency, they put out recommendations about protecting against the flu. There are three steps they recommend. Oh, what are they? Step one 
is getting vaccinated every year. That's the best way to prevent the flu. Right, we always follow that recommendation. Step two is to do the everyday flu prevention things we already talked about, like hand washing and staying home if you're sick. Step three is taking antiviral medicines, if your doctor recommends that. Isn't that medicine just for adults? It's not for children, is it? Oh, yes, children can take antiviral medicines. If your child is sick with the flu, ask your doctor if medicines or other treatment is needed. And if a doctor gives you antiviral medicines for your child, follow the doctor's instructions exactly, as directed. That's CDC's step three. But how will I know if I should take my child to the doctor? I wouldn't normally take David to a doctor if he just has a cold. Oh, right. It's especially important for parents with very young children, children with medical problems like asthma or diabetes, or children with more severe illness to talk to their doctor. Oh, I see. Oh. One more question. When children have the flu, how long should they stay out of school? Good question. One day, 24 hours after the fever stays gone without using fever reducing medicine like aspirin, Tylenol, or Advil. And what temperature is a fever again? 100 or more. Hey, in addition to David, don't you have a little girl too? Yes, Amanda. She's two. <laughs> two? Aw, I bet she's so cute. And signing already, right? Oh yeah, she knows a lot of signs. She's going to be really fluent soon. <laughs> That's wonderful. Did you talk to her doctor about Amanda's flu vaccination? Yes, I asked about the nasal spray that prevents the flu because I thought she'd be too young for an injection. Oh no, she's not too young for an injection. Children ages six months and older and adults of all ages can get the flu vaccination. The nasal spray is for people aged two to 49 years who are otherwise healthy. Yeah, that's what the doctor told me too. It's great that you talk to your doctor about which flu vaccine is best for each person in your family. I wish all families did that. Will my daughter need another flu vaccination next year? Yes. All people need the flu vaccine every year. Each year, the viruses that cause the flu can be different. So, the vaccines change every year, too, to keep your flu protection up to date. Oh, I didn't know flu vaccines are different every year. Hmm. Yes, they are, yeah. We'll be sure to get our vaccinations next year, too. <laughs> you're an outstanding mom. It sounds like you're doing everything right to protect your family from the flu. Thanks. I just want to make sure my kids are healthy. Thank you so much. Of course. You're welcome. I'm glad you came in for this chat.